All the leaves are changing. It's chilly. It's got to be at least... It's got to be 58, 59 degrees right now. And is that you have to just go out the gate and just get in And do you know if you have to just... Hey, big guy. Yeah, we got cool little gates. So we are now at the Queens County Farm Museum, is actually what it's called. But this farm is like the oldest farm in New York, too. Hi, Susan. Get your candy apples now. So this is got a tour of, of what? Of the farmhouse. This is a guided tour of the farmhouse. Okay. Yes. The guard tour of the farmhouse. Yep. How are you doing? Wow. So cool. Yeah. Oh, this is cool. <sighs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, thank you for coming to the farm. My name is uh, Marty. If the kids call me Mr. Marty because during the week we have three to five hundred children. Just like this guy, we go on a school trip, so we got every uh, little person from pre-K on up. Not a petting zoo. The petting zoo is the other side. They're not here all year long, only, only in the winter. They were a for-profit. That's part of us, so, but we are a non-profit. So it didn't cost you anything to get in, right? Right. So 99% of the time, that's the case. Before you leave, I'll give you a brochure. Only certain events you pay to get in. This is a working farm, and that means that we don't go away. We, one thing very unique, well, two things. One, first of all, you don't pay to get in. Second of all, we do not dispatch the animals. We don't. This is a family oriented farm. I've been here over 20 years, and animals do not get cold like us in the wintertime. I've never seen an animal suffer from the cold weather in all the years I've been here. And we've had some rough winters, right? Yeah. Yes. So in the middle of the winter with the snow and all that, they hang out, they look at the sun, they get warm, we get warm, they do fine, we do fine. So you all here for the corn maze and the hay ride and all that? Yeah. Yes. Good, yeah. okay. Don't eat the corn while you're in there because it's not good for your stomach. It's <laughs> not people corn. It was grown many, many years ago. What you, the corn you buy today is called sweet corn. That was not around in the cornmeal days, it was not. Wasn't developed yet. You had Indian corn, okay? Mm -hmm. So this corn for the cattle is called desert corn, field corn, cow corn. Strictly for corn mazes. After the corn maze is not, uh, once it all dries up, a lot of it goes into our compost because we are 110% compost. We don't use chemicals for our sprays. And some of the animals get the corn, not all, okay? So that's called desert corn. There you go. Dented oh. corn. <laughs> This is an original Dutch farmhouse because in the um, early 1600s, late 15, early 1600s, thank you, the Dutch were coming to New York to settle, and the Dutch East India Company came. They were backed by rich guys like us, right? Rich mm -hmm. guys like us. Just like the English up in New England, backed up by rich people to uh, ex not only explore the new land, but to get the riches from the new land. Okay, so that was a wonderful thing. So uh, the Dutch came uh, here, it's called Manhattan because it's a corrupt name from the Indian word, sort of Mahatta, Mahatta, which meant island of hills. There are no hills in Manhattan today, are there? But if you go on a computer and search around, you will see it had nothing but hills. And around 1853, Central Park was created, and they cut down a lot of hills to build a lot of buildings. So very early photographs. Really, uh, uh, the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, a lot of block houses were built right in Central Park. If you go to the north part of Central Park, not too many people go there. Still a lot of woods. You can find the original block house from the Civil War. Very interesting, really. All right, so the Dutch called it New Amsterdam because they came from Amsterdam, right? That's a, 
the English uh, that were up in New England came into New York to settle, and they called it New York for the Duke of York. Or English, but his his uh, Scottish title was Duke of Albany, so that's how you get Albany. So, on to the seventh? Yeah. Good, I'm glad, I hope you do, because back in colonial days, you only went to the fourth grade. Education was not very important. Do you know how to read and write? Yeah. You're very <laughs> fortunate, a lot of people did not know, okay? Do you consider yourself a child or a young adult? <laughs> a young adult, good, because in colonial days you didn't live very long, 35 years old, we can see getting old, the gentleman and I in 1900, we were 50, we were considered to be old men. You ladies up until early 1900s had 10 to 12 children, as soon as the child reached seven, they considered a young adult. Wow. Your day was sunrise to sunset. Wow. Okay. Now, this, uh, so all your children would be sleeping upstairs, 10 to 12. All the girls, you got your own bed, you're lucky. Back in those, those days, they all the girls in one big bed, all the boys in another big bed. The caretaker lived upstairs, so we can't go upstairs. Master bedroom was in another room. There's no bed in there now. The other room was called the parlor. We call it the living room, but this is your main thing, kitchen. Let the steel that's your super lighter today. This is certain lock, and it's mine, so it's called flint. You have a diamond cutter, you have a flint napper. Uh, before the advent of iron, dimes, and tomahawks, Cutting instruments were all flint. You can take another piece of stone and keep going like that, and you'll get a razor sharp point. You can cut meat and, uh, well, with that. So you got a piece of flint, you got a piece of iron, shaped letter C, hardened by the blacksmiths. Now it's called steel, flint and steel. We put our tinder on the ground, and you're going to go like this. I'll do that. Hopefully, you'll get a spark. You're not guaranteed to get a spark. That's your pumping. Okay, so we'll try. Let's go and go. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got a spark. All right. So, if once you get a spark and you got good tinder, we can start a fire. So, in order to cook, what are we going to do? We got to hang a pot. So, how do we hang a pot? We got different sized S hooks. All of this is made by the blacksmith uh, who makes flat meat and got a iron. This sits on a piece of another piece of iron. This is for soup and stew. We put this right over here. And we start cooking, you want to go faster, you put another S hook, and you bring a pot down to the pot. You're going to be out in the fields all day long. When you come back for supper, you can't call up the takeout food. Nobody's going to deliver. So, so the Dutch came up with a recess stop. This is the Dutch oven. It's a slow cooker. There are many different sizes. If you go on a computer today, you can get more, most of this is all reproduction. And they'll tell you all how to cook uh, with a Dutch oven. This is called a yoke, and these are oak buckets, and just turn around. Look, don't look at me, look straight ahead. <laughs> and this is going to go over here. Take this hand. No, 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 not that way. This way, put the thumb on the knees. Good, okay. This one, same thing, relax. Just bring the arm all the way in. All the way in, relax, <laughs> thumb on the knee. Don't look down, don't look down, your shoes know where to go. 1772, there was a river half a mile north. <laughs> Aren't you glad you volunteered? I mean, that's, that's wonderful. Okay. <laughs> How old are you? Eleven. You're a tall guy. Mm. He's a tall guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. he's going to be over six feet. <laughs> all right, okay. All right, so big socks on, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, so, but it's all covered now. So you would have to, as soon as you get up in the morning, sunrise, uh, you make three trips every day. It's going to weigh 40 pounds. It does weigh 40 pounds now, right? So remember that thing, uh, Jack and Jill went up the hill? Yeah. You don't want to fall down because if you're lost in your body, you just have to go back and fill up. <laughs> but after three trips there, your mom or dad says, by the way, I forgot to tell you, it's wash day, another seven, eight trips, all before breakfast. Ooh. All right, just get busy. Get a busy guy, okay? <laughs> all right, thank you very much. Okay, good job. Thank you. Good job. Okay. Um, <laughs> This is all the original house. Uh, what uh, you guys are in right now, the master bedroom. What this divided the master bedroom into the parlor, that we call it the living room, was a solid wall right here with a little doorway. But for you ladies, I'd like you to take a look at what's in the frame. That's called Lindsay Woolsey. That's a combination of linen and wool. This lady has wool. Okay, you have wool. Where do you get the linen from? Okay, we, we grew a plant called a flax plant. If you put that on a flax wheel, you get linen, so that's a combination of. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a ritual piece right from the Revolutionary War on a loom. 
Now, to the right of this gentleman on the floor, behind some plastic, very, very difficult to see, is a visual insulation right down in here, which is most likely horsehair, mud, straw, and hay packed together with a lot of mud. <laughs> So please follow me, we're going into the doorway, they believe, and we're into the parlor, living room, we've got some toys here. This, this is a copy of the most popular toy for boys and girls in colonial days, and you adults would make it for your kids. No computers, I'm sorry. No TV, all right? Now this is the dancing guy, he's made very close to dance. And you gotta sit down to play this guy. And all I do is put it under my lap and just go like that. And because it's made very loose, you can get to dance. There, because of dance. Okay. Now, do you ever get tired, bored, and say, gee, I have nothing to do, I'm, I'm bored? Yeah. Back in those days, you're the parent? Back in those days, you never yeah. gave him a chance to think that way. He was always busy. <laughs> Another very popular toy reminded me of the paddle ball, remember? The old paddle ball? So it's up for a statue. Now, looks like you know how to make things, so get two dowels, put notches in here, loose piece of wood with a nail, very loose, go like that, the vibration, and you get that thing to go. Oh, that's Isn't that something? Look at that. You've got yo-yos, you've got tops, you've got pickup sticks. Here's an original toy from the late 18, early 1900s. If you find originals of reproduction today, they'll always have to size. This is unusual because of the full size. We just restring it, and we just go like this here. Now, it may look silly, but this is what kids play with. That's <laughs> a toy. Now, over 100 years ago, some girl took some straw and she made a doll. Okay. Now, excuse me, I'm just going to open up. This is the front entrance of your house, ladies. You want to have your done. Oh, by the way, these two panes are from 1772. Just want you to know. We have a 1921. This is your skeleton key. The top store is a regular door. We opens up the top, and you can open up the bottom if you want to go out. Now, what are you doing at 5 o'clock tomorrow morning? You're going to be here chopping wood. If he does a good job, we may feed him. Is that okay with you? <laughs> okay. Um, very popular toy to win walking horse. The 1835, but again 1920, two had the same hair, cut and that the same elf kind of outfit. Uh, boys hand me down clothes on on the farm. Girls, uh, we have three things on the farm to make a dress for a girl. We got the wool, we take off, we cut, uh, and we clean it. We, we change the color by vegetable dyes and wild berries. Put on spinning wheel. Oh, this is pretty. 1845, another Dutch family with a lot of money by the name of Cox is uh, built this part of the house. But this is furnished as the last owner from late 18, early 1900s. This was clean as this was Long Island when the Stavels, the German family, came in. They left uh, a little years later and it was uh, part of New York City. Uh, so they made a lot of money. This was one of many Long Island potato farms. You still have quite a number of Long Island potato farms. You can still go to the store and get a Long Island potato. So they made a lot of money selling potatoes, a lot of farm equipment. They are the ones who put up the windmill. And because there's no insulation in the walls, you have your tin ceiling. Mm -hmm. How that works, and you can get on a computer today, whether you're burning wood or coal, the heat goes up and reflects and you stay nice and warm. That's a prevention from burning your house down. They didn't have electricity. That's around 1920. So they had rail oil lamps. You can get reproductions or originals. Now, when there's a storm coming, uh, some people like us many years ago, lit a candle, right? Okay, but we found that's kind of dangerous. So uh, we like the old days in, I have a number of these, and you can get lamp oil. Uh, you don't want any, okay, that falls down, you burn your house down. This, you got two little wicks, you put your wheel oil in there, you've got two little wicks, and it throws out a beam. This is the outside of the house. And that's the windmill that pumps the water out. Pretty cool. It's crazy that that house is that old. 
Seventeen hundreds. Wow. What are we gonna eat, Tyler? Are you hungry? Cool little gift shop. Smells good. Smells like honey. As far as 1697, isn't that cool? Man, that's a long time ago.